Hi ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, of course, I want to remind you again of the importance of being involved in these organizations that are trying to expose, investigate, and prosecute pedophile networks in our country and throughout the world. If there ever was a war where you don't have to worry about conscientious objection, this is it. So please remember Navy SEAL Craig Sawyer's website, vetsforchildrescue.org. And here's some other artistic examples of what he is trying to do to get people aware of what's going on here. I think these show his commitment to what's going on. So I hope you can get behind him. And also there's this website here, which I've talked about before as well, opdeepstate.com. Both of these are very important, uh, very easy to get involved with, and I hope you go and take a look and get involved in this most worthwhile of causes. Thank you. I'm Roy Potter, a former U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel. Welcome to the Potter Expositor. Hi ladies and gentlemen, today is July 24th, 2017. And you know, I really was trying to get away from this, as a lot of you know who've been watching this. Um, I, I, I was trying to push uh, the few people I had on my channel to go look at some other very uh, well-prepared and, and expert people who do a very, very fine job. Uh, and there are a lot of those today, so it would be hard to list them all, but I, I did say a few. Uh, I've been a little under the weather, it's a chronic problem, and so I kind of wanted to back off of this a little bit uh, and pretty much stay to my Twitter account. Um, but apparently uh, there are people out there who thought that they could shut me up completely and so that's the reason why I'm doing this video today to show them that that type of tactic doesn't work with me all right, or those like me who are who are completely converted and understand the perfect law of liberty and, and what we're trying to, to do to restore that today. Now, I've said I've, I've, I support Donald Trump, even though I've been critical of him, because we have to be critical of our leaders. Even when they're our guy, we need to make sure that their feet are held to fire. And there's been a lot of stuff happening in the Trump administration that's been a problem. And this video isn't being done by me to, to go back over those problems. But again, I do support him when he tries to restore constitutional principles, okay? The perfect law of liberty. So, at any rate, uh, he has been threatened with death by assassination, uh, whatever. There's been some more information that's surfaced on that now. A pastor has come forth and explained that a high-ranking Republican has told him that they want to get rid of Donald Trump and not just by impeachment or by other proceedings, but actually, apparently, by killing him, which is something that we've all been concerned about. And, of course, these same th threats have been made against those who support him. We saw the shooting of, of Congressman Scalise um, uh, and the threats made against all those guys there on the ball field and, and other places. The DNC, the leftists, the progressives, the communists, and they're all the same, everyone, and I think we know that now. Uh, are very evil. Uh, their idea of free speech is that they get to say anything they want and you do not. That's how they operate. In other words, it's silencing you. So when, when their rhetoric doesn't work, then they resort to violence, and we're seeing that now. So why am I saying this? Well, by the title of that video, you should know, yes, I've, I've received some not-so-veiled death threats, uh, and uh, it's very interesting that it came at a time when I thought I was pulling away from this. But these people, their timing is always off. They hand this stuff down. They delegate this stuff down to people who really don't know what they're doing. And they didn't analyze this out very well, and they thought that they would shut me up more, and it's going to be just, just the opposite now. I don't really want to come back on YouTube. But at any rate, this is, this is to show them that it didn't work. Now, I've had this before, and I'm going to go through this real fast. Uh, back uh, many, many years ago, I confronted institutional corruption, lies, deceit, thievery, murder, etc. And they caused me a great deal of problems in my personal life uh, and, and in my professional life. 
some of that involved looking into the pedophile problem. Okay, that was just one aspect of it, and, and other others involved around personal freedom. You know, getting government out of our lives, that kind of thing. Um, and and they had people that were doing things to me, causing me problems at work, uh, places I lived. Uh, threats of various types, those things, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail there, just let you know what happened. As a police officer and as a military guy, I've been, I've had threats a lot. That's not new, and these guys that are doing that should know that somebody like me, it's really not going to make a big deal of difference, except just get me going again, get me angry. Uh, I've, I've been threatened by criminals, by the enemy, etc., etc., okay? That's happened before. Uh, I actually had, you know, weapons uh, obviously leveled at me. So that's another thing. Then, um, back in about 2010, 11, that time frame, I was very critical, of course, of the government. I started my YouTube channel and I wanted to talk about how I was upset with the military industrial complex. And I named David Petraeus specifically because of some things that he had done. I had worked for him at one time. And I saw what he was doing and what he was getting involved in, and it got me very angry. And I was hoping that I could, you know, get him to change course. But of course, I'm a nobody, so that's, you know, the lowly lieutenant colonel is nobody going to listen to him, right? <laughs> so at any rate, I came out very critical of David Betrayus, and that's when I first noticed I was getting some of this, this obvious um, surveillance and basically gang stalking by the intelligence community. It was mostly electronic at that point, but. Uh, it was happening, and I recognized it because I, you know, I dealt in that that whole thing for a very long time. But it really wasn't serious; no real threats, just kind of you know, name calling, defamation of character, denying I was ever in the military, you know, that kind of thing. Well, then, uh, when I did the Boston bombing analysis, it really came on. Now, you know, I said some things in there, and I'll stick by them. Uh, there were things happening there between agencies and by government agencies uh, and, and if you go back and look at those, I don't have time to go through it now, it was real obvious even the, the manner in which they executed it. So at any rate I did that analysis and then almost immediately the really serious stuff started happening. Real gang stalking, uh, they would be coming around me, uh, making, making me know aware that they were there uh, electronic again, and, and the defamation and the accusations reached a crescendo level. It was very, very serious. So that was going on. Um, and then uh, the, the whole situation in Nevada came about with the Bundy Ranch. Again, I became very critical of the government at that point because they, the government has, especially these different agencies, they're not law enforcement agencies, they're, they're actual armies wearing badges and guns to appear as if they're law enforcement, but in fact they're occupying armies of these technocratic foreign powers and, and organizations. And so they, I, I spoke out against that, and again it started. Real gang stalking, I mean, there were times when I'd be sitting there in my car talking on my phone and a police car would come and sit right next to me. It was intimidation. They were told by the Fusion Center, I'm sure, to go see who he's discussing these things. Well, I wasn't on the phone with anybody they were concerned with, but they thought maybe I was meeting people or had some other you know, conspiracy stuff going on. It was all absurd. But that's, that's what they do. They want to intimidate you into being silent and into, into giving up, uh, both marked and unmarked uh, vehicles at that point in time. As a matter of fact, I chased one guy through the neighborhood <laughs> once. Uh, he was here at a very bad time. He chose to be here because at a very bad time because if he had checked the police blotter, he would have found out that there were uh, there was a pedophile in the area, and we were watching out for that pedophile too. And he was looking very suspicious. Was he a pedophile? No, because I could tell by the way he reacted with with the way I went after him and and the response when I got on his tail. But that's another story. The point is that these things are happening, and so now. We've received, I've received these very uh, obvious, not so veiled threats uh, of getting, you know, assassinated, executed, shot, you know, whatever. Again, that's not going to stop me from doing what I'm doing, and I, and I wouldn't have come back on YouTube. I really needed to get away from this and just kind of, you know, be an observer here now. But, you know, you guys did the wrong thing. You did the wrong thing. All right. Uh, I might also add that I got involved in a in a situation, a personal situation, where I found out there was some uh, very uh, nefarious activity going on uh, amongst some people, uh, which very likely involved human trafficking at the least, uh, and possibly even.
pedophilia at the worst. And uh, because I did that, a lot of the gang stalking that I received, a lot of the surveillance, I really couldn't tell if they were you know, private security people or government because so often they look so much alike or in fact are the same. So that happened as well. Uh, so the point is, is I've been involved in these kinds of things for a long time, so you're not going to shut me up, okay? And by the way, on all that, I do have those dead men's triggers sent because I do have the different people, because I do have names, places, events, things like that, just so everybody on the other side of the spiritual war understands that. Okay. Well, I guess that's all for now. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this was going on. I'm sure it's happening to a lot of people, a lot of people. Uh, we've, we know that there have been threats against people like Alex Jones and David Knight and um, uh, Michael Savage, Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, etc., etc. There's been a lot of this, and there's going to be a lot more. Uh, and then it's going to get serious, and then they're actually going to, these, these wicked people that, that actually do, do honor Luciferian doctrine and, 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 and the institution of, of real slavery, they're they are going to have to start acting in violent ways just like the DNC and the leftists have said that they will uh, if we don't uh, turn and see that doing their way is the way it has to be done. I'll just put it that lightly. Alright, that's all for now. Um, I, I guess I'm going to have to get back into this to some extent at any rate. Be aware, I am on Twitter. Please come and, and look at that there if you'd like. That's where I'm going to be spending, spending most of my time. I get a lot of information that way. And uh, that's really where, you know, I kind of wanted to go. So at any rate, I'll be back for at least occasionally uh, a little more often than I was planning on. All right. Oh, one other thing. For those of the, you that are doing this, I won't use the name that I'm going to use in my closet here in a few minutes when I go do this. But I'll just say it this way. Okay. God damn you. God damn you. God damn you. I ask God to damn you. Bahashimo et Bahashim Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen.